I've never seen a ball guy use a hairdryer before. It's magenta too. Yeah, okay, so I have a Magento hair dryer. It's actually not mine. This is the fiance's. She doesn't use this one anymore. And I tell you, it comes in handy if you're working with acrylic and you want to try to speed up the drying time. Get a hair dryer, you know? Doesn't really work with oil, but acrylic, water base, yeah. It's easy. This, uh, this helps speed things up when I'm, when I'm using these uh, stencils. So I can lay the acrylic down and then use the old hair dryer and uh, speed up the drying process so that we can move forward quicker. So use the tools that you have or, you know, be creative with tools that you have or go buy tools that you don't have and be creative with those. Both applying paint and, you know, things like this to help you dry paint quicker. So that's what we're going to do. I'll see you in a little while. Okay, here's what we're doing. We are stenciling. That's right. We are stenciling. So I've actually created this stencil. Um, it came from a smaller stencil. Okay, so it came from a smaller stencil. This is the smaller stencil, and I used this here. So I actually used this stencil on a color study for this painting and laid this in the background. On the color study, this, these little things are like an inch and a quarter high. So on this larger substrate, I needed to make them larger. So I actually bought this little stencil that you can you know, cut custom uh, to any stencil you want. I bought this at Hobby Lobby for a few bucks. I'm not really sure how much, uh, five, five, 10 bucks, I don't know. And um, so what I did is I actually, blew, I, I scanned, I actually used my flatbed scanner to scan this stencil into the computer and um, blew it up and they, they ended up being five inches. So that way I can take something smaller and make it larger. But uh, it is a little tedious because you actually have to cut this out by hand. So I printed off the, the five inch pieces on some on paper and laid them down on the cutting mat. And then this is actually a little transparent. So you lay that down on top of those pieces of paper and you use an X-Acto blade and you cut out your shapes. And that's now what I have here. So I'm using this stencil to lay in these, these hexagons in, into the backdrop. There we go. I do this a lot, actually. So we'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, everyone, that's it. That's a quick and down and dirty video about how I use stenciling to add shapes and textures to my paintings, specifically the background. Um, in this case, take a, a small stencil like this and then actually blow it up and create a larger stencil. And you can buy these things at most arts and crafts store. They're pretty inexpensive, but uh, that's, that's how I use stenciling, and you can use a wide variety of stencils. You know, these, these things come in packs a lot of the times, or they're paper, and so you actually won't destroy them at some point, but um, you know, do the best you can. But it's a cool little, little thing to use and create variety in a painting, and I actually really enjoy them, both using them on a large scale and on a small scale. 
Sometimes I will use the smaller stencil for some of the inlay in the figure in these in this particular series of paintings that I'm doing. But um, yeah, that's how, that's how I do it. It's just another tool in my arsenal for creating shapes and texture and what have you. And it's a really simple way to add uh, variety to your painting. So hopefully you got something out of that. Um, this, is, this is the start of a new painting. And so this is probably gonna be part one of a, a small series of me going through this painting from start to finish. And um, so stick around for the rest of that. And until next time, stay creative. I'm gonna go paint. <laughs>